All right, hi folks. Welcome to the Bears Gym. We got a uh, straight up Bible study for you today in the Bears Gym. Uh, if you want to follow along in uh, my uh, workout today, I'm doing a little uh, giant set with decline bench. But we're going to take a break from bodybuilding today and do some uh, straight Bible. And we picked up uh, from where we were left off last time, we did uh, chapter 6, it's been a while. We did a little summer bodybuilding for a bit, and now we're going to do a little Bible. And we pick up in uh, Matthew, uh, in our New Testament studies, Matthew chapter 7. Uh, this is part of the Beatitudes. Uh, it's an awesome, awesome section of the Bible. Um, I pretty much read uh, something out of Matthew or the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, 6, 7 uh, almost every day, just a little bit. Kind of like the Psalms, read a little bit every day. And uh, it gives you a good perspective on life, dealing with people, truth, and your own heart. And that's what we're going to deal with today in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 1, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye mate, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? If you have uh, issues in your own life, don't bother going to tell somebody next door or your brother or your sister or your mom their problems. That's basically what the Bible is uh, all about. Deal with your own heart first before you go and preach to someone else. And I hear many a time, I don't really like going to church. I don't like to go into Bible studies so forth, because there's too many hypocrites. Unfortunately, there's a lot of truth there. Um, nonetheless, we don't want to deprive ourselves from the kingdom of God, of hearing good Bible study, so forth, just because of the people around us, um, they're evil, and hypocrites are evil. Yes, that is the truth. And there's been a lot of preachers, ministers, evangelists, so forth, um, that are preaching to the world, you know, with tears rolling from their eyes and playing the piano, begging for money while they uh, are exposed in some type of scandal. That doesn't mean that all preachers are like that. They're not, you know. Um, unfortunately, uh, like the Bible says, uh, when the tree grows up and it gets big and tall and bushy, the birds of the air come flying in its branches. And we have a lot of birds flying in the branches of the churches uh, for the money. Um, but we don't want to deprive ourselves of, uh, of the truth. And, um, and if we got a good Bible teacher um, that we can hear, uh, we want to listen uh, to help us day by day. We need it, you know, like the children of Israel. Um, they had to go out every day and pick up the manna, the manna that was on the ground. They had to go out and get it. It wasn't like the welfare check that come to your box and then you go down the store and you know, you just blow it on garbage. They had to go out and they had to reap. They had to go and pick up. They had to work. They had to apply themselves. And the manna would feed them enough for one day. And then the next day, they would have to go out and they'd get it again. And so, if you have a Bible teacher and he's uh, speaking to you good things, don't like the people that are around you, the people that, you know, maybe you're aware of something that's in their lives. Don't worry about them. Worry about you. You worry about you, Bear Paw, worry about Bear Paw, and so forth and so on. Anyway, so I want to make sure that I pull the beam out of my eye or uh, the sin that's in my own life, be gone with it before I come and try and tell you how I think is uh, the best way you should live. Um, and that's kind of what we're dealing in Matthew chapter 7. In verse 4, How wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, 
and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. So, let me very be very clear about this. There will be no hypocrites in heaven. God gives you free gift of salvation and life. But if you think you can continue in your sin and pretend you're a Christian and preach to other people while you are a hypocrite and sinning in your own life, God forbid. All right? That's the way it is. There will be no hypocrites in heaven. You have the tools to be clean. Get clean. It's as simple as that. We all have to be clean. We all have to be washed. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. And that's the daily washing of you. You have to be born again. First, come to Jesus Christ. Receive him. Say, yes, I'm going to follow you. And then as every day goes in and out, we have to have our feet washed. As we trudge through this earth, we get dirty. We hear garbage. We see garbage. You know, we're just, we're in amongst other peoples and there's garbage going on. You know, we get dirty. So we have to wash our feet, wash our hands, our spiritual hands and feet. Let the Lord clean you every day before you start telling other ones in your life, your family, your workmates, your brothers and sisters in Christ, the Gentiles, the non-believers, how they should live before you clean your own uh, life in your heart. You know, clean your own life in your heart. Then be free to share the gospel of truth to the world. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Casting your pearls before swine, and giving what's holy to the dogs. There are some things in my life that I view as my personal relationship with Christ, that he's blessed me, that I'm not going to share with you because they're very special to me that God has blessed me with. Uh, perhaps I've shared them to my wife or to my kids or so forth. Um, but I'm not just going to share to the world because they're my something special that God has minted to me. Maybe everything I haven't told to my wife just because... God has ministered to me something special, and I hold that dear in my heart. Kind of like uh, in the end times, in, the, in the, the, the afterlife in Christ. It says that uh, Christ will give us a new name. And it's a name that he and I will know personally. It's something special between him and me. And I view that as being very special, like certain things that God has worked in my life. So, if you cast something holy into dogs and pass, cast your pearls before swine, uh, don't be surprised if they turn and uh, cut you up. Um, because uh, they will. And I'm not going to comment on who they are. Uh, you'll have to figure that out for yourself. Because sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you have friends, family, brothers and sisters, and you think they're close to you and you share something with you, and before long, they're spreading it around and knifing you in the back, and, uh, and, and, it, hurt, and it hurts you uh, emotionally or uh, mentally, and you think, How, why would they betray me like that? Well, the Bible says, be careful what you share before the dogs and the swine, and uh, that's a... Unfortunately, the Bible does uh, uh, give people out there derogatory names uh, by which they are worthy, because they are worthy. All right. Verse 7 of Matthew chapter 7. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If you have a problem in your life, you have a question about life, you're asking the questions, why am I here? What's the purpose? 
um, ask Christ. Seek Christ. Knock on the door. Knock on the door. Knock on the door until you get an answer. Until you find that peace from God. Just keep knocking and knocking and knocking until the Lord opens up the door and comes in and has sweet fellowship with you and gives you understanding of that thing that you're having a problem or an issue with. And sometimes it may take a long time, but just keep at it. Just keep, just keep knocking. Lord, I'm, I don't understand this. Help me understand that. And sometimes it takes time for things to kind of unravel before you to understand why God is doing this thing in your life. And sometimes that, that also has to take place. But keep seeking, keep knocking, and eventually the door will be open so you can understand. Eventually. Just keep, keep at it. Keep, keep walking. Or what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Well, that's a two-step kind of process there. Number one, he's talking about fathers and children. When my children in the past, in the last 20 years, have asked me, can I have this, can I do this, can I go such and such? I think about it, sometimes I give them an answer right away, sometimes I get back with them. And whatever answer I come up with, I think about prayerfully what would be the best for them. Because I want them to have the best, I want to bless them. You know, I don't want to create spoiled brats, but I want to bless them. You know, I want to just bless their socks off with the good things of life, you know, predominantly in Christ, so that when they grow up, they'll be fruitful and happy vessels in our Creator, um, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, so they'll be fruit bearing and they'll have water in their hearts to pour out into other people around them, and so they'll have something to offer in this life. And I want them to grow up to be happy and to make good decisions. Doesn't mean that they always do. Um, because they, they, at some point in their life, um, they are their own little people. And they have to make their own choices. And at that point, it's their uh, free moral agencyhood in God that they can say, yes, I'm going to follow Christ, or no, I'm not going to. I might go to church, and, but I'm not really going to follow Christ in my heart. It's their choice. They will have to do that and make that choice. But until then, I want to give them the right tools so hopefully they'll get down to that road and when they get to that crossroads in their life, they will make uh, the right decision. So, as a father, I want to give them good things. So when you ask your Heavenly Father, I guarantee you, if you keep asking for something that's no good for you and He keeps seeing, saying no to you, listen and accept it. Say, okay, I, I, don't, I don't need that. I shouldn't have that, and just accept it and move on in your life. The next uh, point of that in verse 12, it says, Therefore also all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. You have people that are troubling, troubling you in your life? You give them time. Give them time to, you know, uh, be patient with them and so forth. There are some people that you cannot deal with. And eventually, uh, you, you have no choice but to freeze them out, you know, like Jesus did with the Pharisees, Sadducees, and hypocrites. They were hypocrites, you know, and eventually he froze them out. He, for a long time, he tried to deal with them, give them straight-up answers and uh, parables and so forth, but their, their hearts were evil, and all they really wanted to cross-question him about was to stumble him into saying something that uh, he couldn't answer. But you know what? That you can't do that with God. You can't cross-question him and hope he'll stumble. He won't. All right, so eventually Jesus froze him out. And sometimes when you get to your point in relationship with people that for, you, for your own personal spiritual well-being, you have to freeze them out. Um, but until that time, you know, you give people the benefit of the doubt. You say, well, let's say if I had a bad day would, and this guy's having a bad day or a girl or whatever is having a bad day, how would I want them to react? 
And so I put myself in their shoes and say, okay, well, all right, I'll be patient. I'll let them slide on this one and so forth. You go through that whole process. And, uh, you know, that's how God, God wants us to do with people to the, to the best of our abilities. Um, uh, as you would have someone do to you, do also to them. Um, it's just kind of a principle. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. I hope you don't mind, I'm going to have a little schluck of mineral water here. Thank you for that. Entering in at the straight gate, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. It's kind of sad, but uh, not everybody's going to heaven. But it does give us the instruction Enter in at the straight gate. There's only one straight gate. There's one narrow gate. There's one narrow door, and it's through Jesus Christ. It's not through Mary. It's not through Buddha. It's not through Muhammad. It's not through Krishna. It's not through the Dalai Lama. It's not through any other of these false teachers, even religions, even pseudo-church religions. Um, it's one narrow gate. It's through Jesus Christ. And unfortunately, the straight gate and this narrow way, few that be that find it. I live in the United States. We uh, kind of pride ourselves on being a Christian nation. And yet uh, we allow the porno industry to be rampant amongst the internet for the sake of freedom of speech, uh, bookshelves, kids can go through it, uh, you know, just garbage. Um, uh, it's tolerated. Uh, we, we, we hinder the name of Christ to be preached, but we proliferate all kinds of uh, filthy garbage as if that's freedom. So we have here in the United States, I don't want to say we, uh, I don't, God willing. But our country, our leaders, they have some of our signals uh, mixed. Uh, what's right and what's wrong. Um, who, who you can and cannot marry. And I'm not going to go into that right now. I will deal with that a little bit later on. But um, the reality is, is we're not a Christian nation. We have a little bit of salt in our country. But there's a little salt in a lot of countries. All right, we're, we're a small number. We are a true minority uh, followers of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of religious folks, a lot of church folks, um, but there are few that find the straight and narrow way. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. It's very interesting. The fruit of a ministry, fruit of a political movement, um, uh, political and uh, ethnic group leaders, they say they have a peace plan. You know, they, were, they have a march for peace. But somehow a riot ensues afterwards. And every time they have a, there uh, is a meeting, uh, you know, we have a meeting of peace and we're for, we were into peace and so forth. But uh, shortly thereafter, there's a riot. And... Uh, so you can kind of tell the fruit sometimes. Uh, sometimes we get a little out of control. We think as we got a good thing going, 
And then uh, all of a sudden, you know, we got people uh, marching and uh, uh, there's a gang riot. And, uh, you know, it's like, well, then you have to wonder about what the fruit of that ministry is. All right. By their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. Oh, dude. You know, you got people casting out demons, performing healings, great miracles, great ministries, but they're going to be cast out of the kingdom of heaven. You know why? Because they practice sin in their lives. Maybe they're secret porno watchers. Maybe they go visit prostitutes. Maybe they're, they're uh, homosexuals. Maybe they're drunkards. Uh, maybe they, they like smoking dope when nobody's looking, you know. Whatever it is they're, they're thinking. Maybe they're liars. Um, in God's eyes, liars are just as bad as murderers. Maybe they're murderers, uh, child molesters, uh, uh, all various whatever. And what you did in your ministry is irrelevant. What you do in the privacy of your own home and your own life, that's what God is concerned about. So if you go and you have a big clap offering at your church or your work or a Bible study, and say, wow, what a great guy, you know, and you go home and you indulge in some secret sin, that's what God will judge you for, that right there. God don't care what you did at your church or in front of your Bible study or your group or your nation or whatever. God don't really care. God cares what you do in the privacy of your own home, in the privacy of your own family, in your own life where nobody else can see but God. That's what God cares about. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house, built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. One thing I want to uh, leave with you before we... Uh, check out for today. We're pretty much done with Matthew chapter 7. It talks about being built upon the rock so that when the storms come, it didn't say if it should so happen that you're one of the people that wind should come in your life, then you'll be able to make it if you're built on the rock. Uh, but however, that is a truth. It does say when the winds do come, because friend, they will come. The storms will come. Adversity will come. People will judge you. Life will be hard. You will experience sickness. You'll have difficulties with your children, difficulties with your wife or your spouse. If you're a man, you'll have a difficulty with your wife. If you're a wife, you'll have difficulty with your husband. There will be storms. There will be storms. In the book of Job, it says, As man is destined for trouble, it's just like when the fire is burning up a pile of thorns and weeds and woods, the sparks will fly into heaven. Friend, the storms will come. They're going to come. So be prepared. Don't, don't be in this false world of, I'm praying a blessing on my life, and it's just going to all be good. No, there's going to be times where maybe there's a riot, and you're thinking, should I stay in the safety of my car and watch other people get beat up? No, friend. 
You should get out of your car, tell your family to lock the door, and you're going to get involved. You're going to make a difference, and that's going to storm. And maybe you'll get hurt, but you're going to stand up for Christ and defend people that are being assaulted instead of sitting in your car protecting yourself. Get out of your car and help others. That's what it's all about, friend. If you sit in your car, other people around you are getting beaten up and pulled out of their cars and off. Woe, woe is you. Get out of that car, get out of your truck, and get involved. It's a matter what the law says. You get out there and you help your brothers, your sisters in Christ, your fellow man. If there's a riot and people are getting beat up, you get out and get involved. You defend them. Defend the women and children. Get out there. Men, get out of your cars and help them. There's going to be troubles. And you're going to have to get involved. And you might get yourself a little bit injured. You might have to exert some energy. All right? Some discomfort. But there's going to be troubles. And as a God instructed principle for godly men is to get involved. If you see someone hurting, if you see a need, get involved. All right, we're busy, busy people here in the United States, but the time's got to come where we help, where we help. And I'm not saying pour more money into the welfare system. That's a whole nother issue. All right, we're talking about you, as a man or a woman, seeing storms involved in your family's life, in your life, the storms are going to come. And you have to get involved, and you have to make godly decisions. And so, point being here, the storms are coming, the rains are coming, be prepared. Be prepared, because they will come. And the issue there is, make sure your house, your bodily, spiritual, physical house, is built upon the rock-solid foundation of Christ. I'm not instigating incurring violence. I'm instigating help. Defending. Standing up for what's right. Defending people that are being hurt in your family, in your life, in your country. And sometimes it's hard to do. We're caught in our jobs. We've got to work, you know, 50, 60, 70 hours a week. We're on the road 10, 20 hours a week commuting back and forth. We have to take care of our families. And that is your priority. You know, your, your, your family is your priority. Your relationship with Jesus Christ is number one. Your family is number two. Your job, if you're a factory worker or whatever kind of worker, is next in line. You got to support your family. You got to work to provide for yourself. Unless, of course, you're a, you're a minister that's paid a salary, then you then you minister and you receive your salary by that. And after that, then you have time and effort to minister to others accordingly to whatever the your energies, your powers, your God-given talents are to do. You know, I. I'm not a singer. There are people out there that sing. You know, they go out and they share their their life with the world through music. They can sing. They're, they're talented at the guitar, uh, piano, drums, whatever. I'm not one of them kind of guys. I can only, I can offer you the gifts that I have to the best of my ability. And uh, with that, hopefully I didn't get on my soapbox too much and too long. Uh, go out there and be bold for Christ. Love him, serve him with all your heart, and read the Bible whenever possible. And with that, Bear Paw 7, checking out Matthew chapter 7. That was pretty good. And uh, next time we do Bible, uh, we'll be doing uh, Matthew chapter 8. And with that, we're going to let you go, friends. God bless you. Catch you later. Bear Paw 7 out. See you, folks.